senior. Number 30, Ryan Goodall. Goodall, a six foot senior. Those are the three seniors. Number 14, Reggie Lawrence. Lawrence, a 5'10 junior. And number 10, John Prescott. And Prescott, a 5'11 junior. Is Jesse Bedwell. The officials for this afternoon's ball game are Mr. Ziegler and Mr. Hutchins. I think the key right now, from what I saw yesterday, will be what John Prescott does for Southern Aroostook. I think this young man is an all-purpose ball player. I think he's the type of guy that's going to get him going with the outside shots. He's a good rebounder. He stole the ball several times. He feeds Bedwell real well. I think that he, to me, is going to be the key to this whole thing. Yes, uh, Joe, he's an excellent little player, and uh, we're going to watch and see what uh, Southern Roostick does against uh, Jonesport Fields early to see whether or not they can get the ball into uh, Jay Bedwell. And we're set now for Class D action, the final, as Bedwell goes against Alley. The tip is control by the Jonesport Beals team. Milton comes off with it, now goes to Robert Alley. Now you can see the pressure that uh, Coach Bedwell talked about on the skipper, who's 33. Roger Beal is number 20 for the Jonesport Beal team. He has the ball now. Looking inside, goes to Robert Alley, tipped away, but Alley controls. And now there's a steal. That's the pressure. Pressure coming down to Lawrence on the glove. And no good. Rebound by Alley. Tough chance there, Joe. Ooh. Nice steal by Prescott over Lawrence. And he just couldn't quite get the glass on the layup and missed it. And coming up the other end, there's Skipper Alley. And there'll be no basket on a player control. Remember this year that if a player is airborne, does pick up a player control foul, if the ball does go through the hoop, it does not count. And the other team gets the ball foul line extended as you see there it is uh, skipper alley running into uh, uh prescott and uh no goal prescott now to anderson anderson sat down to left baseline that's where he got a pile of points yesterday prescott's long outside shot of jet there you are joe right there's, there there's a steal there's a basket there's john prescott making his presence known very very early in this contest robert alley in the lane he takes a high fire it's no good rebound underneath and a nice uh, shot and a put in by Layton of Jonesport Beals with tied at two. Right, Herbie Layton made a nice shot off the baseline. Anderson comes down with it for Southern Aroostook. Tied here at two with 6.49 remaining. Prescott's second shot is no good. Rebound off to Anderson. Anderson in the crowd, turns, popped, he hit. Turn around by Anderson. Nice offensive rebound there. And the young man went right back up with it. Allen Anderson for Southern Aroostook. Layton uh, Beal has the ball. Looking inside to Robert Alley. Alley stops, gets it up in the air, and it's no good. Rebound comes off, tipped around, goes to the corner, and it goes out of bounds, and let's see what they say. It'll be Jonesport Beal's ball. Right, Joe, tipped by uh, Southern Aroostook on the loose ball uh, action in front of the Southern Aroostook bench. And this is the man that Bedwell is talking about, and long shot is no good. Rebound long left, picked up by Robert Alley. Alley back to Skipper now. Skipper comes that way. Now he goes toward the middle to Roger Beal on the right side. In the middle to Alley in the lane. Alley turns, pops, and he hits. Nice pass that time from Beal into Alley. And Alley turned around and hit the jump shot. Nice Quarter. movement that time by uh, uh, Alley coming into the uh, play, Joe. 4-4 four four now, 5.55, first quarter action. Lawrence inside to Bedwell. Bedwell's nice school pass inside to Goodall. And there's going to be a foul. So the thing that Bedwell does so well, Bob, is that he does have a, an off-balance great shot. He has a glass shot, but he can pass the ball if he's in traffic. Yes, here it is again. There's Bedwell with the ball, and there's the pass to the baseline. And we got a foul, I believe, on number uh, 22. Uh, That's Robert Alley. Robert Alley, right. Lawrence with a pop from the top. It's no good. Rebound underneath by three of the Jonesport Beals uh, players. Milton being the one coming down with it, but they screened out quite well that time. 4-4 the score, 5-37, first quarter action. Here at the Bangor Auditorium for all the marbles, the Class B Eastern Main Championship. In the middle it goes now to Layton. Layton comes inside to Alley. Alley hooked a nice pass inside to Knowlton, and Knowlton is being fouled by Goodall underneath. Right, Harvey Knowlton received a nice pass, and Goodall got him. Uh, Joe, here it is. There's the pass right there. Comes in. Then he looks down low, and there he is right there, number 14, who's Knowlton. Gives a fake. Up he goes. And here comes a foul with the body on the way up. Holly Knowlton, the junior, six foot on the line now. 
Shot is up and it's good. Kind of a line drive, but right. it hit the front and it popped in. All right, it had to hit directly in the front of the rim, Joe, to get that bounce in and that spin into the basket. Stone Court Beals leads by one, another lead by two, six to four over Southern Aroostook. Lawrence brings the ball now, down now, into Bedwell. Bedwell turns out to Prescott. Prescott, the main man, as far as handling the ball. Hannison, now it goes inside to Bedwell. Bedwell turns, going to scoop it up, and it's good. All right, nice turnaround by Bedwell on the baseline. And that's Art. exactly what Audie was talking about. Maybe we can draw right. some player control. Audie says, wait a minute here, there was some contact, I believe. Nice pass inside to Layton, and he's up and in, and he's fouled. This is a direct pass right inside. Here it is. Here comes Skipper. He's looking deep. As Lawrence on guiding him a little bit, there's a long loop pass right underneath. No hesitation. Right up number 55, Layton. So Herbie Layton, also a junior, pops it up, and it's no good. You get the basket, but not the uh, foul shot. It goes 8-6. to six. Jones Court Fields leading with 447 in first quarter action. Lawrence with the ball, right side goes to Goodall. He's come to the top to Prescott now. Now off to Anderson. Now to Prescott, back to Anderson. Inside to Bedwell. Bedwell's going to turn. Back to Anderson, a baseline jump shot. He had. That time Bedwell elected to go out with it because he knew he may get picked one up because he right. already has one on him. Right, not only that, Joe, but he had four blue shirts surrounding him, and he passed it back out to Anderson, who drilled the jump shot. Excellent pass by Bedwell. This time, Bedwell gets a piece of the uh, alley-oop pass in, tips it away. Lawrence comes up with Southern Aroostook, comes down the other end. We're tied at 8, 4.09 in first quarter action. Prescott's outside shot is in and out. No good. Rebound taken off by Layton. Off the skipper alley. Alley's bounce pass uh, to Melton is stolen by Lawrence. Waited just a little bit on the bounce pass to Skipper. He could have given it up just a uh, hair earlier, Joe, for the layup. Anderson now, another baseline shot, and he hit! Alan and he Anderson. is on fire on the baseline. 10 to 8, Southern Aroostook leading. Six points for Anderson at this point of the game. Excellent uh, shooting from the outside. And here we see it again, Joe. Robert Alley this time counters to tie it at 10. Both teams nice and loose now, Joe, getting into the flow of the game. Shootout here at the Bang Auditorium. They'll shot again by Anderson. Alan Anderson has 8 of the 12. And Jones Floyd Beals wants time out. And you talk about a man that has picked this team up, Southern Aroostook, Alan Anderson, with a great outside shooting from that baseline. I, I think you're right, Joe, and I think what's happened, uh, Coach Alley and Jones Floyd Beals is sagging in on that side, uh, Anderson's side on uh, Bedwell, and uh, Prescott is finding Anderson all alone on the baseline, and he's just firing him up. He's got the hot hand right now, and he's asking for the basketball. And that's uh, what uh, Jesse would like to see. Uh, it, it still is a lot of pressure on a team coming down here like Southern Aroostook having a great year playing some C and B ball clubs. But uh, you can have all the print in the world, but you still got to perform right here at the Bangor Auditorium to win it all. Right, all the media coverage and all the ink, Joe, goes right out the window when you step between the lines. And uh, a Southern Aroostook has got to do it here and not in the media. So you've seen a good team effort by both ball clubs. And I think that uh, we mentioned at the top, uh, we felt that uh, Leighton and Knowlton would get into flow of things with their rebounding, and they have so far. Right. So, and I'm impressed with Jones Court Beals. They're handling things very well here in the first quarter. Alley comes down with an Al Skipper. Inside goes to Robert Alley, and he puts it in as he crept in from that baseline on the left side. And back in the zone, 12 to 12 now. Prescott comes down, beautiful rejection there by Robert Beal. All right, excellent, excellent. Number 22 there, Joe. Uh, Robert Alley on the uh, on the jump, on the hell ball, blocked the shot, and the officials call the hell ball. So they get ready to jump at the uh, Southern Rustic line. Prescott with uh, Beal, the tip of control by Beal, but Anderson has it, does another long bomb, and he hits again! He is on fire in this first quarter. He is just shooting tremendously with good confidence, great release, and he wants the basketball. 14 to 12, Southern Rustic leads. With 2.44 remaining in first quarter action. Roger Beal now to Schiparelli. Long shot, it's no good. Rebound taken off underneath by Goodall and the big man, Layton. Right. Nice, strong rebound by both people. Both went up. I, 
Uh, we got to look for that lob pass by uh, Skipper Alley in, inside, Joe, because they've done that on three uh, different occasions the last four times down the court. So we want to see what's uh, happening on the baseline. The tip now, and there's a violation as White goes in the circle. Right. So Blue will get the ball. Movement on the circle by Southern Arustic, and uh, Jonesport Field will put it in at the uh, midcourt area line, Joe. As Skipper Alley has the ball with 2.32 remaining. 14 to 12, Southern Rustic leading now. Robert Alley falls down, keeps his dribble, back to Beal now to Skipper Alley. At the top, a little pressure for Jesse Bedwell wants. He wants Lawrence out there or Anderson to put a little pressure on him. Hook pass inside. Nice play that time but inside to Layton. And Holly uh, Nolton picks up a rebound and hooks it off oh, the glass and goes in. What a great shot by Holly Nolton. A little hook shot off the glass. Excellent. And uh, there's going to be a foul call on Roger Beal. Right there at midcourt, uh, Lawrence had the uh, ball, Reggie Lawrence, and tried to make a reverse pivot. And uh, number 20 came in on him there, uh, Roger Beal. You see uh, Audi Alley jump up on that one. He thought that shouldn't have been a foul, but nevertheless it is. Not going to first. We still have in the one-on-one uh, -on -one as yet. There's Anderson with another shot, and he's hit. Yeah. <laughs> When you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not. All right, 12 points uh, this period with a minute 54 to go, Joe, for Anderson. 16 to 14, the score. And Jesse's probably saying, glad you came down the bus trip with us. But it's still just a two-point ball game. Even the hot hand that Anderson has had, the Jonesport Beals team, very tenacious, and still very much in this ball game. Roger Beal now to Alley. Nice pass inside to Alley. He ties the game. All right, excellent pass. Robert Alley came across the lane, got the uh, pass from uh, Beal, and made the jump shot. Prescott with the ball now. The top to Lawrence. Lawrence is going to take his hand on a long shot. No good. Rebound taken out by Bedwell underneath. Loses the ball. And picked up by Roger Beal. They're going to call a foul on Lawrence. We're going to see it again, Joe. Here it is. There's the pass out front. Lawrence receives the pass, fires the jump shot. A little bit out of his range, I think. There's the rebound. Comes off. Number 22. Here's Bedwell. There's the loose ball. And Lawrence bumps right there. Inside to Robert Alley. Makes a nice move. And he's going to be fouled by Bedwell. And uh, Jesse Bedwell gets up. It looked like, uh, I'd like to see that one because it looked like he might have had his hand on the ball. But he may have got him with his body. Right, Jesse was concerned about that one, Joe, and he uh, standing looking at the scoreboard. That's two on Bedwell now, and that's another thing that Audie Alley wanted to do was to pick some up on him early, and that's two here in the first quarter. Shot by Robert Alley is good, and now Jones for Beals takes the lead. Well, I guess uh, any Jones Ford Beals team that I've ever watched, you if you're going to beat them, you're going to earn it. Elegant shot is up, and that's good. That is right, Joe. No question. They come to play every time. 18 to 16 with 103 remaining in first quarter action. Prescott now stops to Lawrence. Lawrence goes down the lane. Nice move by Lawrence off the glass. No good. And a rebound scored by Robert Alley. Excellent rebound on the miss by Lawrence on the drive. 47 seconds now remaining. Skipper Alley, first quarter action. 18 to 16. Jones Court Fields leading. Now Alley holds the ball. Off to Robert Alley. Back to Skipper. 34 seconds. As they toss the ball around. Now Alley moves on a dribble to Roger Beal. Back to the top of 26 seconds. Trying to cool it down somewhat. Both teams have been really hot with their shooting. Back to Skipper Alley. He's going to go in the lane. Nice pass inside. And a beautiful pass inside to Layton from Alley. And he scores, making it 20 16 with 10 seconds remaining in first quarter action. Great play by Skipper Alley, Joe, inside. Anderson now with the ball. Anderson the baseline. Anderson's going to put it up. It's no good. And there's one second left. They don't get a shot off. But more importantly, Joe Sport Fields leads after one period of play, 20 to Southern Aru 616. And with that, we'll be back in just a moment, Joe. The Eastern Manor. There was a tremendous shootout. Robert Alley had 10 points for the Jonesport Beal team, and Alan Allison had 12. Right, Joe. Uh, it was good shooting. I, I think uh, Audie Alley and Jonesport Beal's Royals have got to be very, very pleased with that first period of play. They came out here, relaxed, 
and uh, got the lead 20 to 16. Coach Bedwell from Southern Rustics got to be a little bit concerned. He didn't want Jonesport to get out of the blocks quite so fast. As we're ready now for second quarter action, as Bedwell will jump against Beal, the tip of control by the Royals, but there's going to be a violation right. of backcourt. Backcourt violation number 55. Uh, Layton received the ball in the front court, passed it back, Joe, and uh, there was a violation. So the Southern Rustic team trails by four as we start second quarter action. Lawrence now with the ball to Prescott. Now inside to Bedwell. Off to Anderson. There's his shot. It's good. <laughs> Anderson again from Bedwell. Penetrating pass inside, and the uh, play is called. A, uh, the net is hung up on the uh, Southern Aroostook basket. Steve Ziegler uh, tosses the ball up, and each time that Anderson shoots, it gets hung up. 2018 now, and a fine D. First quarter, anyway, and we started off with a bang here in the second quarter. Roger Beal now to Robert Alley. Robert Alley at the top, the skipper. Now to Roger Beal. Beal's going to take his first shot again, and he has. Shooting has just been phenomenal, Joe, from both teams, and uh, Jones Fort Beal again goes up by four. 22 to 18, 7 to 16 remaining. Prescott right down the lane. The flop is good, and the percentage must be about 140 on each side. They just don't miss. All right, Prescott picking up uh, Anderson's flag if there is such a thing. 22 to 20 now. Don't Fort Beal's leading in this D championship final game. The winner will go on next week to play in Augusta. Long shot by Robert Alley, no good. Rebound by Goodall. Goodall, an unsung hero, uh, played very well against the Deer Al Thornton team yesterday. Yes, he did go ahead next week. Yes, Bedwell, and he's being fouled by Alley. Well, that right. time Bedwell didn't fake that much. He just went right to the hole. Direct pass uh, coming in here, Joe. Here's the offense coming, coming down the floor. Here's Lawrence with the basketball. And there's a direct pass, bounce pass into Bedwell. He goes up, and uh, Robert Alley is on his arm. Well, you uh, could see it in, a, in, a, in that picture anyway. You could see Alley one on one with Bedwell. He didn't mess around with any fakes. He went right to it. And uh, coming on this foul shooting uh, that <laughs> Bedwell has. <laughs> the first point that Bedwell has scored uh, today, but. It looks like he's getting ready to wind it up. He misses the second one. All of a sudden, it's just like a feather yeah. off, and he goes in. He's got a little herky-jerky motion with it, Joe, and gets the ball cocked behind his head, but when he releases it, it's fairly soft. 22-21 to score. Pass inside uh, to Leighton. He puts it in. That's worked several times. All right, there's that backdoor pass. Leighton is sneaking behind the defense. Bedwell's up a little bit too high, and uh, uh, Skipper Alley is making a direct pass right into the post over the top of the zone. Lawrence now breaks the press, comes down with it, going right to the hole. Nice scoop by the uh, play that time. And he kind of doubled himself up in a tuck position and puts it in. Right, coast to coast by Reggie Lawrence. Nice play. 24-23, Jones Ford Bill, Beal still in it, leading. Skipper Alley's long shot is good. 26-23. Skipper answers with about an 18-footer. Lawrence now to Prescott. Southern Rooster coming down. He spins. Now back to Lawrence. Baseline now goes inside to Bedwell. Bedwell's move is no good. Gets his own rebound. Gets back up and knocked out of bounds nicely by Roger Beal. Right. They got a hand in there. Bedwell had the uh, uh, layup. Missed it. Got his own rebound and went back up with it and uh, was knocked out of bounds. So the outside shooting of Anderson has opened up Bedwell somewhat because now they're coming out after Anderson and Anderson's getting the ball inside. Very good point, Joe. Uh, and there, there it is again. again. Uh, Whoa! And this time a foul is being called on the big man Layton, and that'll put uh, Jay Bedwell back the line as we see a sub for the Jones Ford Beals team, Philip Kilton. Here's the post pass from Anderson. There goes Bedwell. Good power step to the left, and uh, the foul is called. You see the official right there, Skip Ziegler. And Mike Hutchins, the other official. So Bedwell only has one point in this game. It's one for three from the foul line. Struggling a little bit from the line, Joe. He's got to make that just nice and soft when he brings it up behind from behind his head. He's a real good worker. He's a Steve Joven yep. type worker. He'll go end to end for you. Steve Joven from Van Duren, uh, what Joe is talking about, real hard worker. 26, 24, 540 remaining in first half action. Robert Alley in a fadeaway jumper, and he had oh, a tough shot by Robert Alley over the outskirts hands of Bedwell. Uh, really made a great shot. 28, 24, and they're going to call a foul on Kilton, the 5'11 junior who came in for Roger Beal. 
And uh, we'll see now the one and one. So they've committed their 15 foul. That's only the first on Chilton. And Southern Aroostook has only committed 14 fouls here in the first half. And Lawrence will go to the line. Another solid basketball player, Reggie Lawrence, will be back next year as a junior. He misses. And I think uh, the play, I, you get a little lead, and then all of a sudden you look, and uh, Jonesport Beals is uh, back with you, and then they take the lead. And it is frustrating for the Southern Rustic Ball Club. And that ball is tipped out by Anderson, and uh, Jonesport Beals with good possession back there. Skipper Alley, now to Chilton. Back to Skipper. Now he goes to the left side, not way down now, looking he's going to take the straightaway, and he hits. He throws it. No one picked him up. They were concerned about the inside uh, play of uh, Nolton and Layton, and uh, Skipper said, I'm going to take the jump shot. 5.07 remaining here in first half action. 30-24. Jonesport deals leading. Prescott starts to go now. Off the bedroll to Anderson. Anderson fakes. Going to pop one up, and it's good. It, look, it almost looks like a two-handed yes, jump shot. He does. It? He, he holds on the ball with two hands for quite a long time. And just at the point of release, he just takes the uh, left hand away, Joe. Pass inside. Nice move. Inside again by Layton. And Layton puts it in to make it 32-26. to 26. Still a six-point lead. Herbie Layton's having a good game inside where Coach Alley told us we're going to take it right to Bedwell and see what happens. 4.33 remaining now to Lawrence. Lawrence at the foul line. His shot is good. And Lawrence counters with a jump shot. Boy, I can't recall a, a, a half like this that is just so phenomenal as far as shooting is concerned. Excellent offensive play, Joe, right here. Nice move by Alley, and Alley is being fouled this time by Anderson at the 4-16 mark of the first half. 32 to 28 to score. Here it is again. Ball comes back over to the top of the key. Here comes Alley. Goes up for the shot. Doesn't even hesitate. And fouled by Anderson, number 12. And the skipper will go to the line. He looks he looks tired. He probably is tired. He's worked very hard in this first half, and he misses the shot. A little bit too much movement on his shot there, Joe. He wasn't quite smooth or set. See if he can correct it here. Last nice touch. And that one misses as well. But look who's there. Leighton and he misses. And Goodall picked off a very fine rebound for him. And Lawrence comes down with the ball. And there's going to be a foul on uh, Skipper Alley. I didn't mean that Alley can't that the Goodall can't rebound, but uh, he's a man that uh, is unsung. He'll come off of those rebounds. Right. And Skipper went for the uh, backside steal. The uh, Lawrence had turned his back on the court. Skipper came in from behind, but got him on the arm. And Lawrence goes up the other end, 32 to 28. And I think Bedwell has to be concerned now about the Southern Rooster foul shooting, but there Lawrence relieves a little bit of it. Uh, he leaves a little bit of that foul shooting pressure. They've got to make their foul shots to stay in this first half. 407 remaining. And a real fine first half of basketball. Second shot is good. 32 to 20 now. Uh, 30 rather. 32 to 30. Two point difference. 405. Schiparelli back down for the Jones Court Deal team. Now goes to Robert Alley. Alley's long shot is good. <laughs> I just don't believe this we shooting. Just, we just can't say enough about the shooting, though. The kids are really relaxed and throwing the ball up with good poise and good release. Both teams. Probably the A's don't want to come to this court after seeing this, and that's one by Prescott. 34-32. Well, certainly the nets are singed by now, and they're working on the ring. As they would say, a good burn, and they are burning the net. 333 in first half action. Skipper Alley now outside. Decides to move himself a little bit to the left. Now he tricky dribble stop. At the top of Kilton, he's going to take his shot it off the glass. It's no good. Rebound tip. And it's going to go to Anderson. They're going to call a foul on right, Kilton, who went out of bounds. On, on Kilton. The foul occurred right about at the foul line, and Steve Ziegler uh, saw him and followed him right out of bounds with it. So he going to the line will be Anderson. He was going for the loose ball, Joe, and just got a piece of Anderson. It's going to be interesting to see if Anderson can shoot foul shots because he's, right. uh, he likes people all around him. Now he's got an open shot. And the Jonesport Beal team will now bring in uh, Roger Beal again as Kilton will go to the sidelines uh, for, for a rest with 3.17 remaining. As Anderson shot is up and it's good. He, it looks like he holds the ball two hands to the very last second and right. uses it with his right hand. He does. Let's watch him here. We can watch him closely on the uh, on the camera. 
There it is. Just releases at the last minute. Excellent shooter, and he ties it at 34 with 316 in first half action. Making a little run here. Southern Aroostook with 311 to go in the half, Joe. So it's Lawrence's job now to keep that pressure on Alley. This is what Jesse wanted early in the game. Get the pressure. Don't let him have those easy ones. Now, easy to some <laughs> is not that 20-foot uh, shot that he's been making. Right, they've all been easy uh, in the first half of this game, both ends. At the top of Roger Field, back to Alley. He's going to split, and he has the ball knocked away. It's loose, still loose. They're going to call a foul on Layton, who is reaching in. Right, Kirby Layton on the loose ball. Fouled by, was it, Prescott? No, the foul. Oh, oh, who did they foul? Good off. Good off. That's the magic of the numbers. The two youngsters look alike from here, the dark hair and the side. Good all shot is up and it's good. So they have turned their foul shooting around as different people have been going the line and capitalizing now on the one-on-one. -on -one. If you miss the first, you don't get the second. He does get the second because it's a bonus situation. He made the first. And now Southern Aroostook at the 245 mark is taking the lead by two. All right, quite a little turnaround here, Joe, in the last four minutes. And uh, Southern Aroostook has really come back. Alley's long shot. Robert Alley, and what can you say? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> It isn't right. Give me the ball. <laughs> they are unreal at both ends. Prescott now comes back. He's going to take a pop shot. He hit. Oh, figure out those percentages. This is an easy game, Joe, right? You can <laughs> give me the ball in an open area and let me shoot. We'll go out two on two and take on uh, any radio station in this crowd. But I doubt we could make those. There's Alley with a counter. He comes back. That's no good. Rebound taken off. By Roger Beale, his shot is passing the bucket and then taken off by Bedwell. Good defense that time by Preston. Excellent. Had a hand up and just got a piece of it. So Southern Rustic now has an opportunity to go ahead uh, more than two. They are leading 38-36. Preston's long shot is good. Downtown Leroy Brown. And they lead by four with 152 left in first half action. The defensive guys for Jones Ford are taking some chances, trying to steal the ball, and they hit the open man out front, Lawrence and Prescott, both making the jump shot. Robert Alley comes back. He draws no good. Rebound action, and it's knocked out of bounds by Milton. And Southern Aroostook will have the ball, and they may extend their lead now. 138 in the first half of action left. 40-36 to score, and just a great shootout. And a foul is going to be called on Alley. A dead ball foul there, Joe, on the uh, inbounds play. Clock was stopped. And uh, Skipper Alley was trying to uh, prevent the Prescott boy from going through the ball and fouled him. I think that I can recall back in one of the tournament games uh, was a game between Skank and uh, that's the third on uh, Skipper Alley. Between Skank and Van Buren here at the auditorium in a Class B game, the Prescott makes a foul shot. It ended up 30-30 at halftime, and I'll tell you, this has taken the place of it. This has been phenomenal shooting. Excellent shooting, Joe. And even foul line, even from the foul line, the percentages are going to be high. Prescott hits, and he comes back down. Jesse is up on his seat, but I think a little more relief. 42-36, 138, and I've never seen Audi Alley stand that much in, in a ball game. Not that long. He, he's been up uh, ever since that uh, foul by Skipper. So Skipper with three on him. Looks up at the clock at 126 remaining. Robert Alley. Robert Alley works down low. Straight to the top. Shots no good. Bedwell comes off with a rebound. Now Jones Ford Fields missing at this end. Coming down with it is Prescott. Going to go. Nice two pass to Goodall. And Goodall is going to be traveling. Right. Last three times down, Jones Ford Fields has not been able to set much up, Joe. And they, the shots from the outside have not fallen at all. Skip has got to be awful careful here, and I, I know uh, Audie is concerned about it because he handles the ball, and he's a tough defensive player not to pick up his fourth foul. And he has the ball stripped away from him by Bedwell as he went to baseline. Now Prescott comes up with it. Bounce pass to Anderson. Anderson stops with the man in the air, doesn't take the shot. Back to Prescott. Inside to Bedwell. Bedwell's going to pass it inside. The good all shot is up and still good. And rebound by Alley and foul by Lawrence. Nice. Robert Alley made a nice, strong rebound. Foul by Lawrence. Here it is. Again, Joe, there's the pass into Bedwell. Takes kind of a, ooh, look like a shot. Then he passes off to Goodall. He misses. The rebound comes back in his direction. And a good, strong rebound there by number 22, who is Alley. And he is fouled by Lawrence. And Alley down the other end of the floor now in the foul line with 47 seconds remaining in first half action. Alley shot is up, and it's no good. Rebound taken out by Goodall. 
Our seven roots stick and they lead by six points here. With 40 seconds remaining, Anderson stake now comes up to the top. Now off to Lawrence. Lawrence has to go. Bounce pass to Goodall. Back out the top to Prescott of Southern Rootsburg. Inside to Jay Bedwell. He's got it up and it's good. And he's uh, fouled nice. by, by Alley. And they stay on top of the head. He says, no way. All right, nice pass that time. Perimeter passing by, uh, nice perimeter pass. There's Lawrence. Kicks it back out. Ball's going to come around. It's going to go directly, a post pass directly into Bedwell. Now he's going to go to his right. Here he is right there, up off the glass and in. Basket counts and he's fouled. Alley has three as well, so both alleys have three on them. Robert and Skipper and Bedwell hit the foul shot. It's 45 to 36 with 27 seconds remaining in first half action. And I can't imagine what they'll do in second half. Skipper Alley now, off to Robert Alley. Robert Alley, nice move to the glass and he puts it in. Good, strong baseline move by Robert Alley. That was a big basket, Joe. That stopped the run. Nine seconds remaining now to Anderson. Anderson goes toward the lane, goes stop, pop, and he hits! Alan Anderson having the best half of his career, I'm sure. As he scores at the buzzer. Well, at the buzzer, the score, Bob, is 47 to 38 in favor of Southern Rustic. And Southern Rustic trailed at the end of one period, 20 to 16. And just uh, probably one of the finest first halves of basketball that I've seen in a long time at this Bangor Auditorium. I had mentioned that Van Buren's Kent game when uh, Mark uh, Rosebush was playing and everything was going in on both sides. But Anderson kept it going. He was able to open up with his outside shot, get Bedwell open. Prescott started to pick it up. Goodall started to pick up with some rebounds. But still, the Jonesport Beatles team is uh, uh, certainly not out of this ball game. But one thing Southern Rustic has done, they have got the two alley boys in foul trouble. Yes, they have, Joe. And that, that's got to be a grave concern for Artie Alley, the coach, because uh, Robert has been shooting very, very well from the perimeter. And we saw him uh, the last time down, Jones Fourth Field had the ball, made a nice baseline shot, uh, which is which was a great shot, but he was in mo in motion, in movement, and that can create a foul situation. So he's got to be careful about that. And, and of course, Skipper, who handles the ball all of the time and who is a defensive threat up in the front court, uh, uh, is suspect to uh, foul trouble and uh, his fourth foul. I think that Bedwell, as I can recall, only has one on him. Uh, uh, maybe two, but I think one. So now uh, I can recall always in the locker room, they'll say, well, so-and-so has three on him. Go after him. But somehow they fail to do that. I think they will go after uh, uh, Robert Alley because he is guarding Bedwell. And they've got to get the ball into Jay. Jay's got some good moves. Uh, uh, he is suspect, uh, as they said, about that player control. But he goes hard. And, and today, more than yesterday, because we haven't seen his team play on the season only twice, right. he is dishing the ball off, which make him, makes him more effective. More effective because uh, what happened when, uh, when the turnaround started, uh, Jones Fort Beal was uh, guarding uh, Bedwell inside and uh, the Anderson couldn't get him the ball so Anderson decided to shoot and then when he opened up inside he finally got the ball back into Bedwell and Bedwell became open he's becoming open more from the top than he is from the wing because Lawrence the last three or four times down and jo uh, John Prescott has been getting him the basketball in the foul lane and he's been taking it very very strong to the basket so Robert Alley's got to be careful, Skipper's got to be careful, and Bedwell's got to really play hard uh, in the second half, and, and he can because he has only that one foul. So what does Jones Fort Beals got to do on the other side to get back into it or not? They're out of it, but I mean, get back in the scoring. Well, I, I think what they got to do is they've got to uh, maybe uh, put a little bit more pressure on Anderson and maybe front uh, Bedwell on the inside and force the guards to go to Goodall on the other side and see if he can, if they can shut him down. Go, uh, and we'll go down on the floor right now to uh, Billy McManus. Billy, take it away. Thank you, Bobby. With me, I have Phil Faulkner, the coach of the Katahdin Cougars. And uh, Phil, uh, your comment before I uh, got on the air here was uh, the NBA game was on TV tomorrow, not today. There's some quite shooting they're doing. I think it's fantastic. I know the Anderson kids only missed one shot from the floor. And uh, you score 90 points, roughly 90 points and a half of any high school game. You're putting the ball in the hoop pretty regularly. Isn't it typical of what we want to say when Jonesport's involved in a basketball game and the other team decides to run and all of a sudden they're both hot, you're going to see a great offensive game. Right. Uh, they never were really nothing against Jones for Beals about a real good defensive team, but they're saying you're, you're going to score because we're going to score on one end. You better score on the other. Stay with us. How is your uh, 
season, Phil, in regards to you as coaching? Last year you had a good season. Uh, you went to the finals before, and, you know, I was wondering, how did you interpret this season? I thought it was probably the most enjoyable season I've had as a coach. Uh, the kids I had were young, but they worked real hard, and nobody expected a lot out of us. We came in, and I and I told the kids at halftime of our game down here against Fort Fairfield, whoever won this could go all the way to the final Easter Maine. So I thought it was probably the most enjoyable year I've had as a coach. I was impressed, Phil, at the very end of the ball game, uh, you came down and scored. You had about four seconds to go on the clock, and they grabbed the ball, went right out of bounds, and there wasn't anything you could say, and you couldn't even argue with the officials, but I was really impressed that the first thing you went was to the kids saying a nice job. Well, thank you very much. Those kids have uh, really, really worked hard. For example, we have the one kid, the Smallwood kid, lives 35 miles from school, second year playing ball, so it's, it was a great thrill for me as a coach. Phil, uh, the rumor is down here at the auditorium that you're writing a new book, and it's called How to Beat the Stall. You told me you weren't going to ask about that. Uh, <laughs> I think we're in the record book as play of being the best defensive team in any one ball game and also the lowest scoring team in any one ball game in the state of Maine. When you had that game, of course, I'm referring to the 10-9 game with, with John Bapp. That's not on how well each team performed. That's just a coach's philosophy. And I know sometimes that I say, if you don't want to play me in man-to-man, -man, I'm going to hold on to the basketball because I'd like you to. Your thoughts when you played him on it? I know they probably talked to you about it before, but your thoughts on why you wouldn't want to play man-to-man? We tried man-to-man, -man, we tried everything else, and they ran through the Bob Simlick style of slow-down basketball, and uh, nothing we did seemed to go well, so I said, if you want to sit on it, sit on it. When we got it, we sat on it. I played games, and I get beat that night playing games. That's what you talk about, taking the calculated risk. Right. Bill, what's it look like for Katahdin for next year? Uh, prospect looks pretty good. We're going to be small, smaller than we ever have been, but the kids are coming back with the right attitude, and uh, they like to play the game up there, and we get a lot of support, so I think if we have any last question I want to ask you is I talked with Peter Webb and also Mike Dorenzo. One of the recommendations coming up from the uh, basketball commission from Mike Dorenzo, and you're a former basketball official like I was, they're talking about going to a three-man officiating the tournament. I, Your opinion? I think it should happen, and I believe that it might happen next year. I, I certainly would look forward to seeing it happen, and I think it gives you better coverage down here and a truer part of the ball game for the kids. Do you think it's going to change any, Phil, where uh, some of the uh, skeptics to it would say that, well, there's going to be more fouls called, and it's going to change the game because all during the season I've only had two officials. Well, I don't know what to say to that because we had three officials in the John Babs game down there and it didn't make any difference. <laughs> I, I forgot that. Hey, Phil, I appreciate you coming down here. What do you look for in the second half? I think that you'll find the same thing. Jonesport wants to upgrade the tempo of the ball game. The Southern Roosters got five real smart kids and they're all capable of putting the ball in the hoop. And and fouls, again, will make a big difference in the ballgame. Well, Coach, I can't coach with you this year, so we'll just sit back and relax anyway. Many good times. That, that has been. Phil, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah. for the coverage. Joe? Thank you very much, Bill. And with that, we'll be back in just a moment. This is me. Jay Bedwell had seven. Ryan Goodall had two. Reggie Lawrence had six. And John Prescott had 12 for a total of 47 to 38 for Jonesport Field. Uh, if we could take a look at our uh, halftime statistics up on the graphic. We'll see some fantastic shooting, I'm sure. The percentages, I got to believe, are right up there around the 50% range uh, in both field goals and free throws. And here they are. For Jonesport Fields, they shot 17 for 33 for 51%. Southern Aroostook, 18 for 31 for 58%. Free throws, Jonesport Beals, 4 for 8 for 50%. Southern Aroostook, 11 for 14 for a whopping 78%. Jonesport Beals had six turnovers in Southern Aroostook, three. And the story of the first half, Joe, was the incredible shooting from the field and the free throw, uh, free throw line by both teams. Just unbelievable shooting uh, from everywhere, inside, outside, and uh, all around the key. I thought it was interesting at halftime watching the uh, Southern Roostick band play. One of their players, Mark Bushy, number 24, in uniform, was playing the drum. And now he relinqu relinquishes that to B.J. Hallett, uh, who is the, uh, the Indian, I guess. I don't know. Didn't you always want to be an Indian? Warrior. You are an Indian. Warrior, of course. Old oh, town no, Indian. You're an Indian. You're right. an old town Indian. Right. But I, uh, I made comment the first half about uh, uh, the A's and uh, meaning Class A coming uh, in next uh, Saturday for their tournament here at the Bang Auditorium and just the phenomenal shooting and uh, it was 
Some were open shots, some weren't open shots, but they were just so consistent. And like Phil Faulkner had mentioned, uh, the Anson boy missed just one shot. Just one shot. He was he was really supreme in that uh, in that first uh, half, Joe. And uh, but Jones Sport Fields, Robert Alley hung right in there as well. And uh, they uh, will have to come out in the second half. And, and obviously the shooting is not going to stay with those percentages. The defense is probably going to pick up, and maybe that's who's going to win this game down the stretch. Whoever plays the better defense, and I'm sure both coaches had talked about that uh, at halftime uh, in the locker room. Although uh, Coach Bedwell only had about a three and a half to four minute locker room uh, uh, appearance because they were right back out here. Well, there's a key thing to remember now is Jones Ford deals alleys, Robert and Skipper both have three personal fouls. If Alley, uh, uh, Bedwell may start picking up the scoring pace as is, uh, although we've had it. And we're ready for second half action. The pitch is controlled by Southern Rooster. They'll be shooting at the opposite basket now, down near Buck Street. Nice move inside by Bedwell. The shot is up. It's no good. And the rebound is taken off by Milton. And Joe, it didn't take long. The first pass over half court went into Bedwell against Robert Alley. Now it goes to Robert Alley. Back to Skipper. Inside to Robert in the lane. He's going to turn. going to take the pop. It's no good. Rebound taken off strong in there by Anderson. And they're going to call a foul on Holly Milton. Right, get uh, Holly Norton got hung up on the rebounding action and uh, was uh, whistled for the foul. Here we're going to look at it again. There's Robert Alley. Receives the ball, goes up for the shot. He's off balance, Joe. He's falling backwards. Ball comes off to the, to the right there. And there's the loose ball, and it's picked up by Anderson and is fouled by number 14, who's uh, Holly Norton. Inside the Bedwell, he moves it up and in. And he goes right by Alley that time. And uh, two times down Joe, who gets the ball but Bedwell. And a one point lead now, 49-38. He's off to Robert Alley. Skipper Alley now outside, Roger Beal. Roger Beal down to the baseline, the right side, tries to bounce it inside. The ball is knocked away by Bedwell. Uh, Roger Roger Beals will have the ball on the wrong basket. Roger Beal tried to go into uh, Holly and uh, just knocked out of bounds by Bedwell. Skipper Alley's long outside shot off, no good. Rebound by Prescott. And now Prescott starts to bring down. He's going to stop. Look now. Going inside to Bedwell again. The turnaround jumper is around, no good. Rebound tipped and comes back to Lawrence and Southern Rooster. Off to Prescott now. He's going to be fouled by Roger Beal. A little bit too aggressive, uh, Roger Beal that time on Prescott, Joe, out front. Thought he could uh, tip it away. Here it is. Here's Lawrence with the basketball. Passes over to Prescott. Prescott looks to shoot. And here comes Beal right over the top. Beal no one-on-one as yet. The Beal team has committed two uh, personal uh, team fouls. So say Lawrence jump shot it up and good. I better call him Jones Fort Beal. All right, Jones Fort Beal, right, for consolidation. 51 to 38. Southern Rustic now is down to open it up. Skipper Alley at the top to Roger Beal. Inside to Robert Alley and he puts it in. Nice play that time. Skip it to Beal to Robert Alley with a little jump shot in the lane. Pass it over to Lawrence now as he brings down. Got to go the lane. Puts it up. It's no good. Be down by Robert Alley and Lawrence is going to be fouled. Lawrence came down the lane, took the shot, and on the rebounding action, committed the foul. Here he is, coming with the left hand, sees a little daylight, little opening, up he goes, off the glass, comes off the rim, he goes for the rebound and foul. 51 40, 6 10 in third quarter action. This is all for the models now, the Class D championship. Alley's long shot is no good. Rebound nicely inside and put in by Layton. It'll be Layton, Joe. Nice follow rebound in the lane. Gets it back to nine. Anderson in the corner. Now to Prescott. Prescott's long outside bomb is no good. Rebound inside by Goodall up and no good. Tips it to himself and comes off with it. Nice play by Goodall. Keeps Excellent. it alive. Excellent play, Joe. That's a nice play. We've seen a lot of that in this tournament. Lawrence outside shot and he rings it. All right. Lawrence made a nice jump shot from the uh, inside the key. But we've seen a lot of that, Joe, uh, tipping the ball to yourself. Not only on a rebound, but uh, on loose balls and... Uh, and everything. 53 42. Robert Alley, fall away, jump shot, no good. Rebound by Anderson in the middle. Off the Prescott. Prescott's about to come down with it now. He's going to stop and take a look. Inside the Bedwell. Bedwell's going to spin. Bedwell comes up with it. He puts it in. He's foul. And this time it's going to be on Layton and the basket count. Right. Uh, Jay Bedwell makes a nice move here. Let's see if we can pick it up. Yes, here comes Prescott. He's looking. Finally sees Bedwell open up. Watch the drop step. Watch his right foot. 
right there, makes a good step to the basket. Up he comes underneath, and is fouled by number 55, who's uh, Herbie Layton, who picks up his third foul. He misses the foul shot, though, 55-42, and Jones for Fields rebound. Corelli now with the ball outside. 1-2-2 two, two zone for uh, Southern Aroostook. They stay right in it, attack it in. We'll try to put the pressure from Lawrence on top to Alley. He has the ball right now. Skip us out to go. Take the shot off the glass. Beautiful shot by Skipper Alley. Right. Attacked uh, Jake uh, Bedwell that time. Went over the top him for the bank shot. 55 to 44, 442. Lawrence with an open shot from the foul line. His shot is no good. Rebound gets back to him. Takes the one dribble, gets up again. It's no good. Rebound tipped around. Finally, it's picking off. Pick off by Nolton. Fierce rebounding action that time, Joe. Alley, 33 at the foul line. Stops, looks up for the basket. Now for Roger Deal. Trying to get that ball inside to Robert Alley. Now he's been effective in the lane. Now to Skipper Alley. Skipper on the dribble. Still holds, looking now. Off to Roger Peel, 4-10 remaining in third quarter action. Now the in-pass goes in the lane to Beal. He fakes, he pops, it's no good. Rebound nicely. In here again by Layton, and Layton scores. Nice rebound by Layton. Here's a little pressure now. Don't put Beal, trying to put the press on. 55-46, it seems like you can knock him down, but you can't knock him out. That's right. And making it a uh, comeback. Uh, Anson's first shot is passing the deflected. Pass goes to Alley. Now Skipper doesn't hold up and pop off the glass. It's no good. Rebound by Goodall. Goodall come up with some key rebounds, and Jesse Bedwell wants a timeout to kind of settle his troops down. Yeah, he, uh, Jesse doesn't like the way things are going uh, offensively or defensively. Uh, they're beginning to penetrate his zone. Uh, they make that nice little pass from the point over to the wing, and then Robert Alley receives it from Beal across the foul lane. And that last time he uh, passed it underneath, I mean shot it, and it was missed, and it was uh, rebounded by uh, Herbie Late, number 55, and he put it back in. I don't think uh, Coach Bedwell likes that. I don't think he likes what he's seeing offensively. He'd like to see them set up a little bit more, pass the ball around, and get it inside to uh, Bedwell uh, for the uh, potential three-point play. So a nine-point difference here in third quarter action. And uh, like any championship game, uh, Sellers and Rustic looked like they were going to just uh, blow the doors off the auditorium, and then all of a sudden you look up, and there's just a nine-point difference as Jones Ford Fields is strapped back in this thing. Right. The, the shooting, Joe, that we saw in the first half has cooled down a lot in the second half, and I attribute that to the defense. Plus, uh, you, you just can't shoot like that in a, in a, in a whole game uh, with what's on the line here. Long pass from the intercepted by Robert Alley. Alley's going to go, tries to get it inside to Skipper Alley, and it's tipped out by Lawrence of Southern Arusta. Right, Robert, maybe giving it to Skipper a little bit sooner than that, but uh, it was tipped out of bound by Lawrence. So Roger Beal will put in play now to Robert Alley. Alley goes right to the lane where he loves to shoot, and he hits. Robert Alley loves that little jump shot in the lane, uh, facing the basket. 55-48. Prescott with Beal on him, comes down with it. Alley behind him, he goes, put the ball away, and he gets the steal. A little flick, where we call that the flick drill, Joe, where we come up from behind and flick it to our teammates and try to uh, make the steal, and that's what happened. They got it. Seven point difference now, three minutes remaining in third quarter action. All he's always said, don't count with those boys from Jones Ford Field, and uh, Skipper Alley hits the ball down. Right here, your dad, here it is. 55 to 50 now. Making a little run here as the... Uh, the Royals, and they're picking up a little bit uh, deeper in the backcourt, putting a little bit more pressure on the uh, Warriors. Prescott to bring him down. He's going to stop now, look inside. Anderson's going to get his game going again. As Lawrence has the ball, Prescott to Bedwell. Bedwell's going to put it up. It's not good. He puts it up in the end. Nice play. Nice play and followed by Jay Bedwell. Came under the little scoop shot again. It came off the rim, and he just went right back up and tipped it in. Excellent play by Jay Bedwell. 57-50, 226. Inside to Robert uh, Alley in the lane. He puts it in again. Robert Alley's place right there in the lane. Steal by the skipper. Pass now goes over to Nelson. Into Robert Alley. His shot is in and out. No good. The ball is saved. Nicely by Layton. Off to Skipper Alley. Beautiful bounce pass to Layton. To Robert Alley from Skipper Alley, and he puts it in. And now Jones Ford Fields trails by three. Right, the pressure's really bothering them. 57-54, 154 remaining. 
Could be dead there. Donatelli shoots to slow it down. Good all shot from the side is no good. They call it three seven violation. So everything is caving in at this point. Well, Joe, guess who just came in the door? Old momentum. Old Mo just came in. Oh, and is that him down there? Oh. Just coming in the door for Joe Sport Fields at this particular time. And the Southern Roots has got to be concerned with that. It's got to stop this run right now. It's been a good three-minute run by uh, Joe Sport Fields. There's Alley again. His shot is up. It's no good. They're going to call a foul on Bedwell. So nothing is going right for uh, Southern Roots at this time. No, and everything is going right for Jones Ford Beal. Here's the replay right here. We see here comes Robert Alley in the lane. Up he goes for the shot and he's bodied by uh, Bedwell for the two shots. Robert Alley with two shots. He was in the act of shooting. The shot is up and good. It's a flick of the wrist and it goes Nez good. There's Audie up encouraging his uh, troops. 57-55. Looking shot up and good, 57-56 now. 135 in third quarter action. In this last quarter ought to be something else. Anderson comes down, stops now. Looking around, off the press it. Trying to get themselves grouped and back to it. Lawrence with a long outside shot, no good. Falls the shot, brings it back outside. Anderson, now back to Prescott. Now goes to Lawrence at the foul line. The shot is up and good. Nice shot by Lawrence. Very great, great shot. They needed that to stop the uh, momentum uh, by Jones Fort Fields. Jones Fort Fields has got Southern Rustic in the transition game now, Joe. They're going up and down the court with the pressure. That's kind of the shot that Lawrence took. He missed. He followed. He was there, but he elected to go back out. Yep. And then finally he did make it. 101. Remaining here's the, now. Here's the replay right here. Here we see it. Here he comes into his favorite spot again. And he's fouled. And that's the fourth foul on uh, Lawrence, so they can't really afford to get him out of that lineup. Chiparelli's long shot is no good. Rebound comes off nicely to Prescott. With 51 seconds left, he brings down. Steal by Roger Beal. Roger's going to go in the hole, and he's being fouled by Prescott. Nice steal by Roger Beal. before the shot. Yeah, it was before the shot, Joe. Mike Hutchie, I mean, Steve Ziegler called it right here. Here it is. Here's the breakaway, and here comes uh, Prescott behind him. And Beal's going up for the shot, but the ball was whistled dead right there at the halfway down the lane. So they're not in the one-on-one -on -one yet, so they'll get the ball out of bounds. 59-56 is score, 47 seconds remaining. Beal inbounds it. Nice move by Robert uh, Alley. No, shot is no good. Beal comes off of it, puts it back up. It's no good. Rebound taken off very strong this time by Goodall. Good and rebound. Goodall has been their main rebound. Yes, he's come on strong in the second half. 34 seconds, going right to the glass. Is Lawrence and he puts it in. Dangerous drive by Lawrence, but he got away with it. No one steps in front for the uh, player control. He probably didn't know he's got four fouls on him. And so, 21 seconds, 61, 56. Is, uh, Southern Rustic now picked up their flak. As Bob mentioned, Jones Floyd Beals had a good three-minute run at this for Southern Rustic team. Robert Alley from downtown is no good. Rebound, take it off. They're going to call a jump ball. If the shot was more by the foul line, but when Robert gets up, he kind of leans right. back and lets it go. Yes, he does, go. And uh, that time there, it was a little bit long. There's Artie. And yeah. we'll jump at the foul line with uh, Layton of Jones Ford Beals against Bedwell. With eight seconds remaining. The tip is controlled finally by Prescott. Six seconds. Prescott's going to stop. The foul line. He's going to pop it up. It's no good. And it's going to be a foul underneath by Robert Alley. Ooh. And that's his four. That's his fourth foul right there. One second left. Here's the shot by Prescott. Up it goes. Going to be a little long. There's the long high rebound. And here comes Robert Allen as he pushes off Anderson. One second left on the clock in the third period, Joe. Well, we'll see who's going to get the ball. Anderson puts his hand up, and he's wide open. So we'll watch this one. He just gets it off, did he? It's no good anyway. And I don't, I'm, I don't know if that would have counted or not. I, I thought that buzzer had gone, but uh, we didn't see anything from the official uh, on that. And here we are at the end of the uh, third period of play. Southern Rustic 61. Jones Fort Beals 56 and a great quarter by Jones Fort Beals and with that we'll be right back. Many things make a basketball game possible. Teams, coaches, cheerleaders, officials. The tip is controlled and goes to Lawrence. And that third quarter, Anderson did not score a point. So maybe we can look for him. That's Bedwell inside. He turns, he pops, it's up, it's no good. Rebound strong by Goodall, puts it up, no good. Gets the rebound again, puts it up and it's good. It counts. And it's a foul inside on 55, and that would be Herbie Layton. That's right, Joe. That's it. Here we're going to see it again. Here's Bedwell. Little half-hook shot. 
Hits the side of the rim. Look at Goodall go up for the rebound. Comes back down. Goes up. And we're not going to see it, but if we come on, come on, bring him down. Here he comes. Here comes the ball again. Look at him. He gets another rebound. Up he goes again. And he's fouled. It goes around and around. And in. All right. And the three-point play is good. Big play that time by uh, Brian Goodall and the Southern Aroostook Warriors on the three-point play to start the quarter, Joe. 64-56. And Robert uh, Alley has uh, four on him, and you look up at the scoreboard, and uh, also Layton has four on him of the Jones Court Beals team. For Alley now trying to get the ball in the middle. Out to Roger Beal. So you, you wonder how many runs that each team can make at each other. That's right, Joe. And, and, and the thing to watch for here is who's going to make the run right down the stretch, the last two, three minutes of the game. Good defensive play by Bedwell as he stopped uh, Robert Alley's shot. Rustic, uh, Southern Rustic inside now to Bedwell. He's going to turn, go off the glass. He gets the basket and the counts and Norton is fouling. Right, the foul's on Holly Norton. Uh, here it is again. There's the post pass right there into Bedwell. He turns, wheels to the glass, goes up and underneath, and from the side, Norton fouls him. Number 14 has two fouls. Holly Norton. Well, the man on the line that's made it all happen here. Jay Bedwell, got us up and good, and Jay has signed up already for University of Maine and Prescott Isle next year to take out. All right, Joe, and they go back to the 11-point lead. 67 to 56. Nice move inside by Skipper Alley, and he puts it in. Excellent move by Skipper. Nice drive to the basket. Prescott comes down the crowd now. Still coming. Alley right behind him now. Tries to steal, can't get it. 67, 58 to score. Inside to Bedwell, he turns, he puts it in, he fouls. And I have never seen a person that does that so well make the basket, draw the foul, and make the foul. Here's count. Lawrence coming to the left on the dribble. Nice bounce pass into Bedwell. Wheels in the lane, up he goes strong, gets the contact. The ball goes up and in, and he's fouled. And he's fouled by uh, Layton, and Herbie Layton is fouled out of this ball game. That's the only other person that I have, have seen do that so well was Bob Simbolik when he played for Huffington College. He that must have had 2,000 three-point plays in his career. He was just a fantastic body control and foul shooter. What it is, Joe, it's a great drop step. And, and the, the thing about Jay Bedwell, he does it both ways. When he's going to his right, he just drops that right foot and goes to the basket. And when he's coming in the lane, high to the left, he drops the left foot and just goes right up to the glass. And Audie will come in with Burley Chandler, a freshman. He's 5'11", so he'll... Probably get the uh, pleasure of guiding uh, the man on the line now, Jay Bedwell, who missed the foul shot. Robert Alley comes off with the rebound. 69-58 to score. 6.37 remains in the game for Class D Championship. The winner goes to Augusta next week. Alley's shot is no good. Rebound shot by Prosser this time. Big loss by uh, losing uh, uh, Herbie Layton's job. Bedwell is wide open. Misses the shot, gets the rebound, puts it on the floor. Up and in. And he has taken over. There is, a, there is what's going to happen now. They're just going to push the ball right inside the Bedwell with uh, Leighton gone out of the game. We'll see if Audie Alley can stop it somehow with Norton or even Robert Alley. He may even have to sacrifice Robert Alley inside there. Well, the folks across the way from Dyer Brook are up and cheering, and Robert Alley comes back with a nice outside shot. 71 to 60, 553 remains in the game. Leighton. Uh, Lawrence, I should say, playing with four fouls. That's Bedwell again. It is again. And now it only becomes academic as he is just rolling them in. And Audie, Joe Fort Fields wants time out. I can't blame him. Artie senses that. And, and what he did is when Leighton fouled out of the game, he sent in the substitute, and he didn't have a chance to regroup the defense and uh, trying to pick up a few more steals before he uh, could get into a timeout situation. Now he'll reset the defense to try to set um, against Bedwell, who has taken over the game, Joe, uh, uh, at this particular point. The other thing to mention here is that the, the uh, Jonesport Beals kids are a gutty bunch of kids. They will not break, as you mentioned earlier. They are right in this basketball game. There's still five minutes and 38 seconds to go. They're only down 13, but you can remember the run that they had in the uh, third quarter to get themselves back into the basketball game. So. They're not out of it by a long shot. Their tradition, their pride, they got to reach down now and go after things. So, Audie Alley decides to come back with Philip Kilton. He's number 30. And he stays uh, 
with the freshman Burley Chandler. Trying to get something uh, going here. Long shot by Ciparelli and then an out out, nice outside shot. Put the pressure on, 73-62. Seven point lead now, Prescott down with the ball. It's always important, Joe, to get two points after you call a timeout. There's a steal right there. Robin Alley right to the glass and he puts it in. And you notice that down at the other end, uh, Bob, that wide open was Bedwell and he has a freshman on him, so he'll probably try to take him to school if they get it inside to him. That's right. There it is. There it is. And he does and he draws the foul. Right. Another thing that Jay Bedwell does uh, very, very well, and I just noticed, and we're going to see it on the replay. I want the folks to watch him lean into the defender once the defender's in the air. Watch 24 right here, Chandler. There he is. He leans in. Now he's back, and he puts up the soft half hook, I guess. I guess we could call it a half hook, half jump shot. And he'll get ready for two foul shots. 501 remaining in the championship game, 73 to 64. One thing about the championship game, Bob, you come in the semifinals, you win one, you're there. You win one, and you're there, right? It's a short tournament, but it's uh, very, very important. Well, I think Audie Alley has done what he wanted to do this year, and he's done a magnificent job of the things he's been down there coaching. And Bedwell puts the lid on a couple, or puts the ball in the hole for a couple, 75 to 64. It's 456, Chipper Alley, the long shot. He goes back with it. And he is dynamite. And Joe, since the timeout, Stone Sports Beals has scored six points, which is important to remember right here. 75 to 66. And a steal in there by Chilton against Byron Fowler. And they will go to the line for one and one. Chilton hammered the ball down to the high, but I think Audie's telling him something right there. It was frustration. Chilton went for the steal, missed it, got the ball bounced in his hand, and his first impulse, I think, was to bang it on the floor and catch it. But uh, it went up in the air, which essentially could be a technical foul but uh, it's not caught. Mr. Hutchins went over very gingerly and made the call and looked away, and then boys will be boys. The shot is up, and Prescott is good. Well, you're, you're plugging, you're, you're trying to get back, you're trying to put something on the board, and everything counts now, and at 444, we're still in the game. 76, 66, 10 points. And with that man right there with the ball, he is always dangerous. He's going to keep you in the game, and so is this youngster right here, Skipper Alley. He's made some big hoops here in the fourth quarter. Back to Skipper Alley from Kilton. 4.30 remaining in the game. Now off to Robert Alley. Alley now comes in the middle of Kilton. Nice move off the glass and in. Good play. Good, to eight. Good play by Kilton on the jump shot. 4.17 remains, 76-68. Prescott coming down with it now. Stops for the column for oh. travel. Right, carrying the ball. Carrying the basketball, another turnover. Here comes the Royals again. Look out, the fans are getting up on this side, Joe. Coming back in, looking to cut it to six. Jesse Bedwell just kicked his chair, that's why they were up and cheering. 4.05. Ken Beals, Ken Jones, Bill Beals pull off another miracle. Nice shot by... Robert Alley and he hits and then they're going to run it again. 76 to 70. Here comes the run. Robert Alley coming down now. Alley goes for the steal, doesn't get it. Now to Anderson inside the bed. Well, he's going to wheel, puts it up, and they're going to call a foul on Kilburn. As Bedwell wheeled quite well and picked up the foul. Here it is again. Watch uh, Bedwell receive the ball. Now watch 24. Tanley tries to go under Bedwell this time. Goes down, it wasn't much contact there, Joe, but he's fouled by uh, number 30, who is uh, Kilton, Kilton uh, on the arm on the on the uh, shot. So he's going to get two shots. So with 345 remaining in this game, 76 to 70 to score, Jones Floyd Beal has asked for a timeout. Well, whoever would have thunk it, huh? Joe, we got a six-point game with 345 to go. Uh, the Royals have made another run. The question now is, is it going to be enough? Do they have enough left uh, by uh, losing Leighton? Uh, you know that Bedwell is going to receive the basketball as many times as he can on each of Southern Aristic's possession. Is Chandler going to be able to stay with him? He's going to have to get some help, I believe, from Robert Alley uh, underneath. On the other hand, there's uh, Audie uh, talking to uh, Mike Hutchins, uh, the official at the bench, and I'm sure he's asking about the number of timeouts left uh, for his team. But uh, Jones Sport Fields never say die. They clawed their way back in. They got down 11 points, and here they are again, 76 to 70. Now, that timeout right there, let me ask you this. The momentum was going for him. Uh, 
and he did call a timeout. Right. Was it, as you say, because of Bedwell, or, or does he want to regroup and put somebody else on? Well, I, I think that what he wants to do, he wants to regroup, number one. He wants to make sure the kids know exactly what they're doing in the pressing situation. He may even change the press a little bit or change the defense to see if he can't uh, get some help on Bedwell because it's obvious what the Southern Roosters is doing. And Jay Bedwell now with the line. Shot is good. He's got a, it looks like a line drive or a brick when it takes off, but he feathers it in. Yeah, I, I think he'd like to get the, uh, Jesse would like to have him have the ball up a little higher, Joe. Gets it right behind his head, right there, and uh, he puts but, it in. But it goes <laughs> in, so. 78 to 70 now, 345. The time so important in this Class G final rush here. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you are. Skipper Alley shot is no good. Comes out to Kilton. In the lane, the pop shot. Good! 78-72. In the press. Field, trails by six. Coming down, Prescott now stops with the ball. That Still could have been a technical foul right there, Joe. Chandler's acting floor. Acting, right? Good all puts it in. I haven't seen that much this year, though. No, we haven't. I, I don't think it's been called very much, but that time there, it may have been called. Alley on a scoop, and no good. Gets his own rebound. Skipper puts it back up. Bedwell blocks it, gets it again. No good. Rebound by Robert. Alley puts it up. It's no good. Alley again with a rebound, puts it back up. No good. Alley with another rebound. Has the ball knocked away, and he's being fouled by Prescott. Let's see if I can. Rapid fire. What action that was. Uh, Skipper Alley, there he is. Shot is blocked by Bedwell. Call it, Bob. Up he Call goes it. again. <laughs> The shot is missed, and here comes Robert Alley to take over. First time, up, hits the front of the rim, gets his rebound. Down with it again, there's Anderson. Up again, misses. Up again with a, now a power bounce and the layup, and he misses again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, those people up to Old Town will be some proud of that. That was some action, and Great you can see some shots on goal then. Robert. And after the smoke is cleared, Robert Alley takes the foul shot right. and makes it. He better take a deep breath because he's tired. That was that was excellent board work on the offensive end by Robert Alley. So both teams now in the one-on-one -on -one situation, although this is a two-shot foul. Three minutes exactly left in this game. Alley makes both and goes to 80-74 now. Who's going to shoot the foul shots down the stretch, Joe? We might get into that situation. Good ball handle. Prescott brings it down now. Going to go show the glass. Now he stops. And he's going to be fouled by Skipper Alley. That's four on him. Right. Uh, Prescott uh, picked up his dribble, and Skipper tried to make the steal and get caught for the fourth foul. And he's limping a little bit as he goes to the foul line. Skipper Alley goes over to talk to Dad. 2.54 remaining in this game. Critical now, foul shot. A good shot right there from behind as Prescott gets ready for the shot, puts it up and in, drills it. Our so guys important. on the camera, are, they're all there. And you know, it's not a foul shooting contest. It's just a, a good, hard playing by both teams. Nobody is, nobody right now has shown any evidence of take care, taking care of the basketball and running down the clock. They're both playing. 82 to 74, 252 remaining. Ciparelli now to the right side, dribbles all the way to the baseline, stops, looks, puts it back outside to Kilton. Kilton's gonna stop, takes the pop, and it's no good. Rebound by Robert Alley. He's in traffic, puts it up, and it's no good, and he's being fouled by Anderson. Right, nice uh, heads up play again by Robert Alley. Gonna see it again. Here's the uh, the play. Kilton takes the shot. Watch Robert Alley go after the rebound. Here it is, right here. He receives it. Loses possession momentarily. Goes right back up, and Anderson gets him on the arm. So Robert Alley has to be a tired young man as he has worked so hard shooting, rebounding, playing defense, but he's still right there making a foul shot. Excellent foul shooting. 239. Jesse Bedwell would love to have that clock move. I He'd think. love to have it 39, Joe. And the clock starts to tick now at 238. Prescott's a good ball handler. Big charge, bringing the ball down inside to Bedwell. He spins, puts it off the glass, and this time it's going to be a travel. So I think Jay Bedwell will take the travel and not the player control. All right, there's, the, here's the Jesse. Wondering what's going on. Got his glasses off. Concerned. Six-point game, 82-76. Uh, 2.31 left. This is one of the Alpha Factory stats. 2.27. Now in the corner of the freshman Chandler. He's going to go, and he's going to be fouled by Bedwell from behind. So the, uh, the freshman did it quite well. All right, look, Chandler, Billy Chandler. Here he is on the baseline. Makes a nice move with the basketball. Left hand protects it well. Fakes, goes up, and he comes in back, and Bedwell fouls him. And Bedwell's got four fouls with 2.21 left. Well, a lot of people with four fouls out there now. 
221, as Bob mentioned, 82, 276 to score. And nothing is sacred here. As first one team makes a run, then the other. And the shot is no good. Billy Chandler and Audi Alley gives him uh, applaud. Uh, he's a freshman trying to spirit him up. You can see how young that man <laughs> does look. Yes, he is. Shot it up, and it's no good. Rebound puts around. Robert Alley, the other shot is up and good. It stands up over Goodall and makes the hoop. 82 78. Now Prescott four. comes down with it. 2 12 remaining in this ball game. Prescott almost loses. Now he does. It's going to be a foul call on Chilton, and he has just fouled out of the ball game. Right, uh, he has, Joe. He's played a good game, and there was a loose ball there, and I think Audie wanted a, uh, a traveling violation, and here we see it again. There's Prescott, and there's the reach in by Kilton right there. Well, Jesse Bedwell is probably wondering how many times are we going to take a lead and lose it? Or have Jones Ford Beals put that uh, tie a little bit? His tie doesn't look like uh, Hawk, does it? No, <laughs> no it does. Quite. Very conservative. Jesse likes the sweater, he said. I think right here, though, it, with, with both teams, Joe, uh, at 82 78 with 209 left, and both teams not taking care of the basketball, not trying to run some time off the clock, especially Southern Roosting. And uh, here comes the. Uh, uh, the uh, player for Kilton and uh, Jody Davis Jody is a Davis. senior, so Davis will finish it up. A rugged built boy, five foot nine. And now Prescott has Yeoman job here. He's got to have a pair, and it's good for Prescott. I guess my point was, Joe, if they're not, not taking care of the basketball, that's going to allow Jonesport Fields to stay in the game longer. 83, 78, 209. Second shot is up and no good. Rebound inside by Goodall. He puts it in. Oh, unsung Goodall. What a rebound off the lane and puts it back up and in. 85 78. Southern Rustic fans across the way to say keep that clock going. Shot by Skipper Alley off the glass and in. 85 to 80. Neither team will roll over for one another. Lawrence down with it now and the ball is knocked out of bounds by Skipper Alley. Good hustle by Skipper trying to stop that clock. We haven't heard from Anderson in a long time. We might Just watch half. him, Joe. We Just might, half. All right, we might watch him. There he is. And he goes inside to Bedwell. Bedwell's going to turn, put it up and in. And he leaves the freshman on the floor and puts in two, and it's 87-80. All right, Chandler tried to draw the foul again and was not called. No call that time. Schiparelli with the ball now outside. Goes inside to Robert Beal. Robert Beal's going to turn, go up against uh, Bedwell, and he hits it. Nice shot. He makes it 87-82 now. Robert uh, Alley making that basket, 119 remaining. Coming down Prescott, Goodall gets it back outside of Prescott, 114 remaining. Goodall doesn't want anything to do with that basket. Now it goes out to Prescott, now to Lawrence. Lawrence is not afraid to pop it. He a big basket right there. He cans it, 89-82 with a minute left, Joe. I want to see Bedwell if they do hold on, what he's going to do after this game. He has churned himself inside out. Alley still moving, he's on the line. Turn it over. Stop chance right there. Skipper trying to drive the baseline and pass it into Robert Alley, uh, who was cutting for the basket, stepped out of bounds. Big turnover. Coming down now with Prescott with the ball. Prescott going to go right to the hoop. He puts it up in there. Oh, now he won. 82 to score. 44, four, uh, 44 seconds. So it looks like the miracle may fall shot here. Skipper Alley with a long ball. No good. Rebound comes long. Take out by Anderson. He's going to hold the ball now. Slow it down. It's going to be fouled by the freshman, Burley Chandler. Yep. That's going to put him on the line. Burley Chandler commits the foul. Central Aroostook clenching the victory. 31 seconds, 91 to 82. Southern Aroostook with Anderson going to the line. Fouled by Chandler at half court, trying for the steal. Another uh, final game was played at the Bangor Auditorium with a lot of points going. It was 72 Jones Fort Field Stevens game, and that ended 88-81. Joe, well, this, this is 91 to 82. This is a shootout. Unbelievable. Look at the numbers on that scoreboard. Well, a lot of people uh, sometimes aren't interested in D basketball, but I tell you, if you've missed this one, you have not seen a better played basketball game. And a lot of games that I've seen, not only on this season, but over the years, this has just been phenomenal. Fantastic shooting. And a pair by Anderson. 93 82 now, 11. It looks like Southern Aroostook has finally avenged a year ago. Nice scoop pass inside to Robert Alley. He puts another one in. He's got a bundle. Here comes Alley again. 93-84. 17 seconds and another foul. Foul on 
Kepa. Well, it's going to be interesting when Bill gets a hold of uh, Bedwell, what he has to say. Uh, 12 months have gone by, a long year. You get spring, you get summer, you get fall, you're back in it. Uh, you have to think with a ball club they had a year ago, what can you do different? Uh, you know Jones Court Beals is going to be here. Uh, psychologically, they came in this one. They thought they were better prepared. They did get behind. They did come back. So they have finally held on in a very, very fine Jones Court Beals team as Skipper Alley has fouled out of this game. And this will bring in number 11. That will be Doug Iron. Right. Well, there you saw in the replay, you saw Skipper trying to reach around for the uh, for the flick on Anderson and just caught him with the arm. So Audi decides to showcase some people here. We pick him up. Chris Beal, number 10. Number 34 is Kevin Blount. And the other young man in there, number 40, is uh, Stephen Sisselwood. He is back at six foot in the program, but he's finally six foot four. He's a big boy, uh, Joe. And a real fine Jonesport Fields effort. And a shot by Anderson. He has one more point, 94 to 84. As the Southern Aroostook bench has just come alive. Guard is up and good. 95 to 84, 16 seconds. It's academic now, Bob. Right, it is, Joe. It's in the books now. Just a matter of the final score. Southern Aroostook is going gonna, is gonna to win this one. Long shot by Chris Beal was no good. The ball was deflected. It came all the way back. Four seconds left. Another one goes no good. And that's a buzzer. The ball is put up and in by number 34, Kevin Blount. But the score goes Southern Aroostook 95 and Jonesport Beal 86. Jesse and is just happy. a classic basketball game by both sides. Look at Jesse. He's really happy. He's taking the plaudits from the fans as they come down. It's, it's like a monster off his back, Joe, because now he's the champion. He is the Eastern Maine Class D champion coach of the Eastern Maine Southern Aroostook Warriors who uh, defeat Jonesport Fields 95-86 to 86 in your old-fashioned shootout uh, here at the auditorium. Milling around the Southern Aroostook uh, players and fans and cheerleaders. Just ecstatic over this win. Uh, they've just recently put a basketball program together at uh, Southern Aroostook and Dyer Brook. And uh, this has got to be a tribute to Jesse Bedwell and, uh, and his program and his staff uh, and the school system uh, there at Southern Aroostook uh, for their uh, championship. Well, it's, uh, it's fitting too, Bob, because Jay Bedwell is a senior. He'll be leaving next year. I think you're going to see Jesse get out of it. Uh, I've seen Jesse over the season and talked to him uh, when he was at John Bapp back in 1972 to 74. He was very colorful. Uh, he brought a lot of excitement to uh, to John Bass, the Bangor area. Right, I coached we him, heard, and, uh, When we heard he was coming down from Southern Aroostook here in the tournament, we knew that it would be exciting again. Uh, last year he had a lot of technicals. This year he backed off. He didn't have any technicals on him on the season. It's fantastic. And he's just done uh, a magnificent job. But he's he's had some kids. Uh, they're real fine basketball players. Finally, Joe, I've been waiting. Now the first thing the kids do when they win the championship is go up after the nets, and now the Southern Rooster kids are finally getting up there. Uh, generally, that's the first thing they do. They get the ladders out, and the kids go streaming for those nets, but they're so happy. Well, I think uh, if I read it right this morning, I think Oak Grove uh, Coburn uh, won the D over in Western part of the state. Go to my handy guide here. I got the or they're in the finals. Right. right. I know that. Right. In Class D boys, Buckfield is playing Oak Grove. Okay, so they, it's, uh, four okay so they play at right. 4 o'clock. I play at 4. That's correct. I don't think Jesse cares if he plays the Sully. He could care less. All he wants to do is get into the game, Joe. Into the game, which is the state championship game, and he has done that with Southern Rooster. Well, if Oak Grove Colvin should win, Derek Counts, who played a year ago for Oak Grove Colvin, here at the auditorium against Jones Ford Beals at 39 points, which is a single... Record for a state championship play in Class D, and they'll be down at the auditorium. And Alley, which Alley's that? Robert, Robert Alley. Robert Alley had 44 points. Woo! So he uh, he really uh, picked up the load, and and uh, uh, Jones Sports Fields has got nothing to be ashamed of. Joe, they came in with a five and 11 record, but uh, they proved that they belonged here. 
Uh, they proved it right down until there was one minute left to go in the game. They were still in the basketball game, and uh, it's got to be a tribute to, uh, to Audie, who's the veteran coach uh, uh, and the veteran uh, mentor here in the uh, auditorium. Now we take it down the floor to Daryl Perry, who is the athletic director of Bangor Christian High School, who is going to make the presentation. At this time, if we could have Coach Alley come forward to present the individual awards. First thing I'd like to do is congratulate Jesse and his ball club on a fine game and wish him the best of luck uh, next week in the state championship. Uh, I don't think our kids could have worked any harder than they did. Uh, they played a tremendous ball game. They came back. We started in the hole when the year started and we kept climbing hills the whole year and I don't think really there's too many better teams than what was up here today, and they showed it. And I'm proud of you. You uh, people won't remember, we weren't supposed to make a tournament. And if we got up here, we weren't supposed to win a game, and we're in the final, and we've got some awards anyway. Uh, First award, uh, my two managers, Delmont Brown. And the first girl manager I've ever had, Sandra Alley. And my other manager I've had uh, for, well, I guess since he's been born, just about, Troy Alley. And if everything doesn't go too bad and we don't lose somebody in another year, we probably will have a lot of these kids back. Uh, my my two, I only have two seniors. Uh, first one, Kevin Blount. And my other senior, Jody Davis. All of, all of our other kids will be back another year. Uh, first of all, the uh, kid been sick all day, Chris Beal. Stephen Thistlewood. Uh, both of those kids sophomores. Uh, freshman, Burley Chandler. Uh, junior, Dougie Island. Uh, junior, Philip Kilton. And the last five kids, I think, I don't know if I missed anybody or not. The last five kids have been our starting five all year, and I don't think you could ask much more out of them. First, uh, sophomore Roger Beal. Junior, Herbie Layton. And uh, my other junior here, a good ball player, he's worked hard all the game yesterday, and you couldn't ask much more today. Harley Knowlton. And the last two, uh, one of them, I uh, remember seeing him when he was just a little fella, and I've had him since. Good ball game. Skipper Alley. Yeah. 
And the last uh, boys been our leading scorer all year. And we'll all be back, you watch. Robert Ellis. I want to wish Jesse the best of luck again. Uh, bring you back here, Jess. I like to say one last thing. We maybe we didn't win, but we've got one of the best uh, cheering coaches, one of the best looking cheerleaders you ever saw, and my assistant coach, Kevin Toll. Coach Alley, if you would have your captains come up. I'd like to present you with this plaque. It says, Boys Basketball, Eastern Maine, Class D, runner-up, 1984. There it is. Uh, runners up, uh, Jones Sport Fields Royals, folks. Uh, there's Robert Alley and Holly Norton right there. Let's go over the uh, final stats for Jones Sport Fields. Kevin Blount had two points. Uh, Roger Beal had uh, two points. Uh, Ordy uh, Skipper Alley had 16 points. Uh, now, Herbie Layton Eastern had 14. Maine champions. Holly Norton had four. Bill Kilton had four, and Robert Alley had a total of 44 points Roosevelt, for Jones Sport Field. Coach Bedwell, would you come forward, please? And he was eight for nine from the foul line uh, with those 44 points. Tremendous effort uh, for right now, Robert Alley. The coach Tim Prescott up here with me. He's going to do the honors of uh, making sure I don't forget anyone. First, I would like to congratulate Jones Fort Beals on another excellent year. A lot of people told me they don't have anything. They've lost 11 games. I said, bull. <laughs> I know what they can do. I've seen it for 100 years. <laughs> and I know it'll happen again tonight. So again, and I'm not just, you know, I will say anything when I'm up here. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean it. Allie's boy just about buried us. And uh, uh, the rest of the Allie family and all the other Allies and Beals. It's a great tradition. I've, like I said last year, and you buried us. We were supposed to blow you out of the building. It didn't happen. This year we had to struggle, and I mean we struggled. We had good talent. Congratulations, Coach. I mean it. You're a heck of a coach. <laughs> and now for the Southern Aristic that two years ago was buried and unheard of, these announcers on Channel 5 and 7 and 2 and the Bangor Daily News <laughs> did not know where Southern Rustic was. <laughs> they know now. <laughs> they know now. Okay, and they, they backed us as well as they do all the teams. And it was a great year. Uh, I've waited 21 years for this, and I've always complained about the girls' coaches that win championships staying up here for a week. And here I'm doing the same thing. Let's get, let's get to it. I'd like to start out with the managers, Kathy Bryant. Good job, Kathy. Heather Newman. No. <laughs> we also got good look managers. <laughs> Joe in time. That's why I stay in this business. How else is an old bald-headed fat man going to get a hug like that? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the lion? Jason Tyre. David Lindsay. Mark Douglas. Okay, Brent Dubois. Yeah. 
Mark Bushy. Okay, now for the first six, call him the first six because James Greaves came to us. He only played one year of basketball, but he helped us quite a bit down through the season. James Greaves. I'll start with, I'll start with uh, Reggie. Reggie Lawrence. This guy here is supposed to be a non-shooter. Who would believe that today? A guy that helped Jay Bedwell with the boards and has been consistent, the most consistent, rebounder, offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. He didn't get the most every time, but he was Mr. Consistent, all-around player, Ryan Goodall. Okay, John Prescott. Right here is one of the finest point guards, regardless of class. Right here, John Prescott. He took it to him today. We need shooters in this game, and we got one. Mr. Outside, Alan Anderson. And now, I've waited 21 years to have my son help lead us to a state championship and we're one game away from it. He's a heck of a player. Jay Baywell. He comes up and tells me, I thought he would say, geez, Dad, you're a great coach. He says John Prescott had 15 assists. <laughs> I want to thank the community for the support. And we did have support. You can look on the stands and see that. We've got support. We're going to Augusta next week. We're going to come out smoking. <laughs> Coach Bedwell, would you have your captain come up, please? <laughs> Darryl Perry again, assistant, uh, I mean, athletic director at Bangor Christian. I'd like to present Southern Roosick High School with this trophy that says Main State Secondary Principals Association Eastern Maine Champion 1984. And they're going to cherish that one, Joe. It's just too bad that uh, Jesse's so in inhibited and intimidated <laughs> by the crowd and the fans here and everybody in the place. He, uh, he's got a big smile on his face. There's Anderson and Jay Bedwell, and there's Jesse in the background uh, uh, savoring the victory. Uh, Eastern Maine champions, and let's look at the final statistics for uh, Southern Aroostook. And as you might imagine, uh, their balance, uh, scoring, and play overall uh, is indicative in the scoring chart. Here we go. John Prescott, 18 points. Reggie Lawrence, 16 points. Ryan Goodall, 9 points and a bushel of rebounds. Alan Anderson, 22 points. And Jay Bedwell, 28 points for a total, Joe, of 95 big points for Southern Aroostook Warriors. A great game. Uh, an excellent fan game uh, for the fans to enjoy, not only in the auditorium, but our viewers out along the airwaves. And there is the uh, championship, and here we look at the final statistics, and we want our people to look at the shooting figures. It was a shootout here at the Bangor Auditorium. Jonesport Fields, 38 out of 91 for 41%. Free throw shooting, 10 for 16 for 62%, and committed seven turnovers. 91 attempts, Joe, by Jonesport, Jonesport Fields. Southern Aroostook, 35 out of 64. Phenomenal shooting, 54%. Took 31 uh, foul shots, com uh, completed 23 of those for 74%, committed 10, 10 turnovers, and those are the stats, the final stats uh, for the game here, Joe. Just tremendous shooting by both teams.
Well, you look back and listen to what Jesse had to say, and I think he could probably pack this auditorium on a lecture tour if he wanted to. Jesse, he is, he is something else. He is, he's, awesome. he's really comical, and he's really loose, and uh, uh, he, he, he enjoys it. He enjoys life, and like he says, he's been doing it for 21 years and never got one, and, and he's one game away from uh, winning the whole thing, and you've got to appreciate that uh, from Jesse, who's given his all in coaching for those, uh, those amount of years. Now they get the chance to have the pictures taken, and... Right, the you can see picture. that nice shot right there is everybody. They get the managers in there, assistant coach. Got the assistant coach, who is uh, Tim Prescott, is the brother of the uh, the guy that plays John Prescott. Right. And your and dad the was here yesterday as well watching the game. And he used to work in the Bangor area, now up in Dyer Brook. So I guess Jesse had said it uh, to the media. Yeah. Uh, now you know where Dyer Brook is located. Right. You know something, Joe? I, the thing I noticed about Southern Aristic here is, is the fact that they're, they're really kind of reserved and subdued. They, they don't really know they want it yet. It's probably because they never have, and, uh, and therefore they're a little bit uh, scared to really say, hey, we did it, let's jump up and down. And let's go down now. Uh, Billy McManus has got uh, Jesse Bedwell with him for the interview. Bill? Jesse, the comment we had is, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. And the second comment is, uh, we think you got to come out of your shell a little bit and uh, <laughs> use more good words and describe, hey, you're, you're just a happy man. I know. Yeah, I should have more descriptions, but <laughs> I, don't, I get in trouble with descriptions. <laughs> I just play it plain and simple. In 21 years it took me to get here, and I've been in the final four and the final two all my life, and finally got to an Eastern Maine final. It feels good, doesn't it, Jeff? Yes, it does. It's, uh, I had two goals pretty much in life, and that was to be a, a Marine. God only knows why I picked that. <laughs> but the other one was to be a winning basketball coach and win a state championship, and I'm pretty close. You're close to it. Your kids played real well, and so did Jonesport Beals. Right. Jonesport intimidated us. They come at us several times, and so we were managed to hold them off. Uh, that was a tribute to our kids. And uh, because you, Jonesport had the tradition, I knew they'd come at us again. And the kids said, don't worry, coach, we're not, this is not last year. Well, they had the one I was impressed with, Jesse, in the first half, you had two kids that were strong. And it was the three boys that you've gone to all year long with Prescott at the point. Anderson kept you in the game the first half, and then they went to the well with, with Jay in the second half, and Jay made some real good moves, and Anderson made some good shots from the corner. Right. There, were, there was a stage when Prescott kept us in, a stage when Anderson kept us in, and, and Jay put him away. What and, do you think on next week? Well, I, I think that uh, if I get time to think about it, uh, I think it's going to be the greatest day, win, lose, or draw for me because it's the first time I've been in a state championship game. That's a lot of fun. Uh, Jesse, listen, I have your principal here with us. <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted. I can't wait. I said, I'm ready right now. <laughs> but as soon as you get here, then it gets over. So you have to wait a little bit. Jesse, with you, I have your principal, Mr. Crosby, and on behalf of MPBN Television, what we'd like to do is present to you and the school and to Jesse and the team players. This is a videotape of the game that you just played, and uh, you can take that back to your school and replay it for the kids, but that's uh, on behalf of MPBN. That's our gift to you. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate it. I'd just like to say we'd like to thank MPBN for the coverage. I don't think these tournaments would be what they are today if it weren't for the type of coverage you give. There's one thing I would like to say about our team. I think they've seen the caliber of athlete we've had, but not as enough have been said about the caliber of student they are. They're excellent young men, and we're very proud of them. Thank you, sir. Jeff. I think every one of them was on the honor roll most of the time. Uh, it's just an unusual team. Was I, the coach on the honor roll? Uh, this year, yeah. You know, I never got a technical in a regular game. <laughs> Now, I'm slipping. Don't draw, man. But hey, before we get off here, there's one thing that's got to be done. Go ahead. The fashion award of the year has got to go to the Hawk. And he is something else. But he's got my boy in summer camps wearing funny clothes, too. So I'm a little worried about him. Is there any question? Uh, is it true you're going to wear a stripe and tie at the state championship game? Hawk said he's got one, but he couldn't find a... a, a he, he tried the fat store, and he couldn't get one. And he's going to tend on him, see if he can find one. <laughs> Jesse, good luck to you. We'll be down there, and best of luck to you, and congratulate the kids. Thank you. I will. Joe? Thank you very much, Bill. And uh, with two games left, Bob, uh, this B, C, and D tournament has seen 14 upsets out of the 30 games, and we've got two tonight as the Bs are in action. Again, uh, the uh, Southern Aroostook team trailed at the end of one period, 2016. They uh, took the lead 47-38 at halftime. They led 61-56 uh, at the end of three, and have won a shootout here at the Bangor Auditorium, 95 to 86 over the Jonesport over the Jonesport Beatles team. This is Joe Gould for Bob Leahy and for Bill McManus, and we'll see you this evening.